All right, let's, uh, let's, let's read some questions here. For some reason, after all the ignorance you just heard, believe it or not, people actually write into me and they ask for my advice, knowing that I have no background in psychology whatsoever. All right, so here you go. It's your own fucking risk. It's your own risk. All right, Kenya. Uh, hi, Bill. I'm a Bostonian, like yourself. Uh, I'm a suburban outside of Boston. All right, get it right. Okay, I lived in a cul-de-sac and played street hockey. Okay, I wasn't I wasn't down in Southeast stealing cars, good at math, like an apples. It's a whole different breed of tough guy. All right, I had Legos, I had Lincoln Logs, I had a tree fort. Okay, all right. I'm a Bostonian like yourself. That has a question for you. My wife is Kenyan, and we have a place near uh, Nairobi National Park. The government is ramming a railroad straight through the middle of the park in clear violation of the environmental efforts put in place by past generations for the betterment of the Kenyan people. Uh, This park is considered a World Heritage Site, and this construction would be devastating. Would you be willing to champion this cause with your connections? What What connections do I have to stop a railroad being built in Kenya? I mean, not going to lie to you. My last couple of specials were pretty damn good, but I don't know if I can stop. He goes, I hope just to bring attention to this cause as it is being implemented very rapidly before people can complain about it. I can assure you this is a very good cause and deserves the attention of anyone who values nature's nature. Now, I'm off to fight in the traffic on the Jamaica way. Um, all right. Wait a minute. Well, you know, if you send me a fucking link or something, I can definitely retweet it. Um, but I think the best thing for your cause would not be me to be a spokesperson, as long as I don't have to speak about it. Because I'll tell you right now, I'm not going to read. Even if I read up on it, I'm going to stutter. And it's just going to, you know, I'm, it's going to come across as a, of a, of a, as a dope, right? But, yeah, just tweet me a link today, and I will, I will retweet it. And um, I don't know. I mean, they're not listening to their own people. They're going to listen to a fucking comedian in L.A.? Don't John play yourself, Bill. Everything counts. Well, fuck it then. I'll go positive, okay? I'll, I'll join the goddamn cause. I'll say, don't build that railroad through that park. And then they'll say, well, what's your other solution? You got, a, you got an alternative? And I'll say, no, I don't. All right, concert story. <laughs> hey there, Billy Vanilla Tits. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, a month ago, I took my niece, the little lady. And a couple of friends to a concert they wanted to see. I get free tickets to lots of shows, yada, yada. So I took them. Uh, we get there and I'm immediately, and immediately I'm standing out in an ocean of teens to get into this thing. Another group of friends show up and they're accompanied by one of the other girl's dads. So we say hello and walk into this situation. It's pretty slow at first. The opening band didn't have me in mind when they made music, but they were okay. The second band came on, and they sounded real familiar. The dad says to me, I heard about these guys from Bill Burr. They were amazing. So I'm I'm immediately like, like, fuck yeah, this guy knows about Burr. So after their set, we walk outside and decide. I would guess that was 21 Pilots, because I went to go see Mute Math, and they opened uh, for 21 Pilots, and, and they had a very young, young crowd screaming like it was the fucking Beatles. Um, So anyway, so after they're set, we walk outside and decide to have a couple of beers while the kids enjoy the main act that definitely didn't have us in mind when they made their music and talked about, uh, Jesus, she talked about me and laughed our asses off in the lobby. What a turn. Not only did I get to stay with my, is this like a fluff piece? Why was this sent to me? I'm not saying that you sent the email. I'm just saying my fucking podcast guy. Uh, Not that I didn't want to stay with my, my niece, but I had an excuse to let her hang with the friends without me standing there. And if I didn't have this guy to talk to, I'd be the lone dude in the lobby or even worse on the floor watching the show. But it doesn't end there. All right. I'm, I'm guessing this is why the email was sent. Here we go. While I'm standing out there, a girl walks through and asks me what time it is because her phone died. I answered her. And a couple minutes later, we're talking about everything and anything. The other dad was a champ. He laughed at my joke and then peaced out when he saw things going well. What was going well? Not like some married dudes. Uh, oh, oh, what? This chick came. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, what? Oh, I answered her. And a couple minutes later, oh, we're meaning you and the lady. We're talking about everything. 
and everything. The other dad was a champ. He laughed at my joke, then peaced out when he saw things going well. Oh, there's not enough guys like that. Right, Dad? He fucking made it look like this guy. He's holding court. There's a guy right there. That guy, he gets out in the intersection when the light turns green. He makes sure two cars behind him gets through. That's what I'm saying about that guy. He said, yeah, he made sure he peaced out when he saw things were going well. Not like some married dudes who don't get out much and feel the need to flirt so they have uh, something to jack it to later. Anyways, I've gone out with this girl a bunch of times then and got into a new band that I love whose name I won't name because you don't like to name names. All because of old Billy original recipe tits. Uh, thanks and go fuck yourself. Well, that's great. That's great. You know what? And that's a nice fucking story for all the cock blocks out there. You know what I mean? Those people who fucking cock block, I've never understood that. It's such like a, it's such like a, ah, this is bad. So I'm going to trash women in this. I'm, I'm the worst. I was going to say that's such like a female thing to do. You know, chicks have that fucking thing where it's just like, well, if something good's not happening f- for me, then I'm, and everybody around me has to suffer. That's like what, that's like the male version of that is the cock block. Well, if I'm not going to get laid, you're not getting laid. Get the, f- get the fuck is, what the fuck is wrong with you? You know what I mean? That's that fucking douche who throws the lady out of the way and jumps in the fucking lifeboat on the Titanic. That person, right? Um... I don't know. How the fuck did, that's like male behavior and I still ended up trashing women. Like, what the fuck is wrong with me? I mean, part of it is I have issues with women, obviously, but the other part is it's just so fucking fun to annoy them. Maybe that's my fault. Maybe that's my problem. Is it wrong that you'd rather annoy them than fuck them? Is that weird? Or is it just sort of a a different approach? (laughs) Oh my God. The best people watching in the fucking world, Reno International Airport. That fucking Burning Man thing was coming in, and I, I was going on, you know, a couple... Everybody kept asking me, hilariously, going, are you going to hang around and go to Burning Man? First of all, it was like two, three hours away from Reno, I guess. And secondly, it's like, dude, look at me. I was joking about that on stage. I'm a 48-year-old fucking bald white dude. I'm not going to show up there and freak everybody out. I look like a cop. Everybody's going to be in the middle of taking acid or whatever they're doing, and then I fucking show up. Looking like I have a walkie-talkie on my, on my waist. I don't want to do that. That's, that's some young kid shit. I hate when fucking people my age, right before they just totally just, they're just too fucking old to even hide it anymore. I hate when they still try to go to young people's shit. It's, it, it's over. It's not your time. You don't remember when you were, I remember back in the day when I would be in the clubs, you know, way back in the day, old Billy Redface in the clubs, won't bump a don't bump a don't bump a don't bump that girl is poison, right? There'd always be that fucking old creep in there and you just be looking at him. Like I remember just looking at somebody who was like 35. Even like 27 started to seem old. Like what the fuck are they still doing there? We were like 20, 21. Fake IDs getting this plane. There'd be somebody 27 in there. Like, what the? Dude, you should be like married with kids by now. That's what 27 seemed. Now here I am, 48. <laughs> I don't, you know what? Who the fuck am I to tell you what to do? It's just my own personal choice. I don't, I like going to adult shit. I want to be with adults. I, I don't want to be, um, you know what I mean? I don't want to be around that shit. Oh, but by the way, and speaking of young shit, I have to give a shout out to a DJ named Afrojack, who I'm not going to lie to you. I never heard of the guy. I'm not in that fucking world. And everybody sent me this thing where he took a clip of some shit. I guess I talked about DJs like a couple years ago. That's how it works on my podcast. I'll say something and it, it takes like two years before anybody really hears it. Like that Kardashian thing or the Yoko Ono thing. Like I said, those like they, they I did the podcast and it goes like two years goes by. And then somebody who actually has a, uh, a podcast with influence like Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan blew up the Yoko Ono thing. Um, so anyways, people were sending me this shit. And he did like a, I don't, do you call it a song? Is it a track? Is, is it a something else? I don't know what the fuck is. I don't know what it's, I don't know what the fuck it is. But he, he somehow lined the shit up. And uh, he put me in a song. And um as much as I still don't get what the fuck is going on, I, I, I want to thank the guy because there's a bunch of young people in the crowd and, uh, you know, performers, you need that. You got to keep getting the next wave of young people. As your fans start to get older, they have kids and they can't even go out if they want to go out. 
You know what I mean? Like he just, he probably just stopped me from going on cruise ships. He delayed that for another like six years. So thank you very much, Afrojack. I don't know if, he, if your name is Afro Jack, like that's your first name, or it's, if it, your name's Jack and your nickname's Afrojack, like, you know, Billy Red Tits. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I appreciate it. Thank you for, you know, whatever the fuck, you know, how, how have you said, it? However, however you kids say that shit. Um, you know, it's funny. I actually watched this thing one time with Nia recently, this documentary on DJ AM. Can I just say that again? And you guys, so I can make you cringe again. The fact that I, as old as I am, just said that name um, on DJ AM. And I watched it and uh, I actually started to understand like, oh, what, I, to see that. I know there's an art to everything, but I actually was really starting to understand it. And Nia was talking about how one time she and a friend of hers were in New York and went to some fucking club. And that guy was DJ in there. And she said it was like the sickest night ever of music. And, uh, you know, within 10 minutes of being in the club, everybody's like, who the fuck is the DJ? And then they figure out it's that guy. And I don't know what it is. It, I guess it's like what song leads into the next song. And you're, you're changing the energy of the crowd, which I'm relating to stand up. Right. You don't open with your closing bit, but you got to open strong. Then you got to take them on a ride. You bring them up and then they're going to they're going to be burned out. You got 40 more minutes. What do you do? You take them down a little bit and you start building it back up down a little bit. And then you drink them a fork. And, yeah, you know, it's like wrestling. It's like when I did uh, Stone Cold's fucking uh, podcast. And you talk about how you bring them up, down, up, down, up, down, a little more higher, a little bit lower, a little higher, and then you get them right in that last fucking moment, and then they, they fucking explode and go nuts. So, I don't know. I haven't said that. Well, I, I just fucking, I like seeing live drummers. That was that problem I had when I went to go see fucking Lady Gaga. Like, I can, I can go see anybody if I can see the band. She had a band in a fucking house. They're like in this fucking castle, and she's riding around on a goddamn horse. Oh, Jesus Christ. Jesus fucking Christ, I believe, was my quote. Um, by the way, what, what the fuck's... T- Tony Roma right now, okay? If, if he was... It's hard to say this, you know, because I could never retire from fucking stand-up. I don't feel I could. And obviously, he loves football the way I love stand-up, I would think. But, like, this is the time to retire. This is the time to just say, you know what? Fuck this. You know? It's like Ali, those last few fights. If he didn't have those, maybe it would have been a little bit different. I don't know. What the fuck am I to say that shit? But I don't know, man. You fucking break a bone in your back for the second fucking time. Jesus Christ. How fucking tough is that guy, by the way? Everybody always breaking his balls. Um, I probably shouldn't have said that shit, you know? I don't know if he's married or if he's got a woman in his life. Because what if I just gave her ammo and then I just ruined his breakfast? Tony, do you hear this? Do you hear this podcast? You hear what this person who never played organized football past the fourth grade said? Sorry. Look at that. I'm sitting there fucking shitting on uh, cock blocks, and then I turn around and I make a move like that? What a fucking asshole. That's, you know what, Bill? That's just typical you. Um, all right, let's, let's read these last couple, and then I'll read a couple more fucking questions or whatever. Um... All right, Simply Safe. Thousands of people seeking home security get ripped off every day. And home security industry, and the home security industry, wants you to believe it's your only option. They've got hordes of salesmen out there trying to scare you into signing one of their long-term contracts. You get stuck writing huge checks month after month with no way out. It's robbery by contract, and it can cost you thousands. But there's a better way to protect your home with Simply Safe Home Security. Simply Safe has no contracts, none. You'll get award-winning 24/7 protection. Kifa Sutherland, um, named best in the industry. Security professionals watching, ready to instantly send the police. It's just $14.99 per month. That's less than half off what the company's charged. Protect your home the smart way. Uh, Protect your home the smart way. Visit simplysafeburr.com. Go right now, and you also get free shipping on your order and a free keychain worth $25. A $25 keychain? The fuck is it made out of? It only takes a minute. That's simplysafeburr.com. Hey, simplysafeburr.com. And finally, lastly but not leastly, MV MT watches. When you're in your early 20s and 30s, money can be tight. Just like the pussy you fuck. If you're not careful, dressing well can drain you quickly of your bank account, like spending four to five hundred bucks on a department store watch. 
There's some brands out there charging insane prices for watches. You know what? They're not even worth it. Well, if you want to look good, if you want to look great when you go out, but still have enough money to buy him or her a drink, hilarious, check out movementwatches.com. I've seen, uh, I've seen them before, and these watches are sharp. I hate when they say what I've seen. You sent me some. Yeah, they're nice watches. Originally founded by two broke college kids, Movement Watches cut out the middlemen and their big brand retail mock-ups in order to give you a stylish watch for an affordable price. Movement Watches start at just $95. A watch with department store quality for a fraction of the price. They're sleek and minimalistic, a modern twist on a classic style. Movement has grown organically, purely by supporters like you. So join their more than 1 million social media followers and get movement, get a Movement Watch today. Go to MVMT, mvmtwatches.com slash Burr, and they'll give you 15% off your entire purchase. mvmtwatches.com slash Burr. All right. Um, there we go. I think that's it. Okay, let's get back to the questions. Where are the questions? I'm a little out of sorts here. Uh, okay. Oh, this will be a good one. Stand up at high school reunion. Oh, no. Oh, this just has fucking train wreck written all. If this is a comedian and they're going to do stand up at their high school reunion, oh, that takes balls, man. All right. Bill, fuck you, sunscreen burr. Uh, We've missed a couple reunions now. All my classmates are married with kids. Uh, So we, I'm guessing, your significant other. I've been doing local stand-up for a while now, but that's been two hours away from where I grew up, and none of my classmates have seen it. S-C-E-N-E. They haven't seen it. Uh, This is why it's great to get into show business, is you can be as dumb as me, and you can still be successful. Um, Now, they've asked me to do a set for the reunion. I'll admit it's different for people you know, so your advice on going after the home crowd that knows you. Keep it clean, offensive, use your best shit regardless. What are your sunburn thoughts? My sunburn thoughts is you're out of your fucking mind. There is no fucking way. There is no fucking way I would do that gig. I'm going to stand up there in front of these fucking people that I knew for 15 years of my fucking life and haven't seen for 20 years. And I'm going to be, as I'm looking at them, trying to de-age their faces and figure out who the fuck is who. Oh, my God. And go right back to being like the, the pecking order. I'll tell you right now, you got balls. Like right now, the fact that you just said that, you know. I'm going to do stand up at my high school reunion is the spider moment in Goodfellas where he goes, why don't you go fuck yourself, Tom? And then De Niro goes, oh, <laughs> just like that pause. Shoots him in the floor. He tells him to go fuck himself. You know, that's right. Don't take no shit off nobody. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. And, you know what, dude? I say you fucking do it. And this is the thing, dude. I would I would fuck. I would not hold back. I would give him both fucking barrels. The only thing you have to lose is, is if it goes bad, you're going to have a great panel story about bombing in front of people you haven't seen in 20 fucking years. Um, my advice would be I would definitely, I would see the humor in this situation, how fucking ridiculous it is. Um, that's what I would do. You know, I, don't, I would make some sort of joke that, you know, after me, you know, Fucking Joe Blow over here is a biologist. He's going to come up here for 10 minutes and look through a fucking microscope or some shit. I don't know what I would I have no idea what I would do. Um, but I've actually, I, you know what? I've done something like that. I, I'm, not, I'm not going to lie to you. I've done something like that. I, um, I, I did stand up in a bar in my hometown. And there was, it just so happened there was, there was like, I don't know, there was like a table of people I went to high school with. And I'll never forget looking at them. The look on their face was, holy shit, that's that fucking guy I used to have snowball fights with. Like, they're not even listening to you. They're just watching. They, this is the thing. They're, 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 they're psyched you're doing it. It's all between. It's all about keeping your own fucking head together. And uh, I'm not necessarily good about doing that. Like, I don't, I don't even like seeing the crowd before the show. I hate that. I hate when before I go into something, somebody goes, hey, Bill, looking forward to the show or like, hey, really like your stuff. I, I hate that because I feel like. I always feel like, well, now what if I go in there and I bomb or what if you don't like my shit? 
And then you already said that, that you liked me. And then you're going to feel bad that you said that because I stunk. Like after the show, I'll talk to people. After it went well and I felt like I gave you your money's worth, then, then I'm fine. But I feel like if I get compliments on the way in, I'm, I'm, like, uh, I'm like taking out a loan. Does that make any sense? I don't know. So anyways, I, all I got to say is you, 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 got more, you got more balls than I do. And if that sounds weird and disjointed, like from that, my last thought, it's because I had to pit pause and go fucking shut off the air conditioner. Oh, it's going to be a fucking hot one today, you know? All right. I think this is the last one here. The last question. All right. Last question here. Uh, ex-girlfriend's sister. Uh, hey, Billy Bergenstocks. Uh, I'm 26 um, and still in love with my high school sweetheart. We've been on and off for, again for 10 years and have gone through a lot to say the least. Jesus Christ, yes. I just got back from a two-week vacation with her where everything was perfect and we had the time of our lives. This is the woman I want to start a family with and it became more and more apparent on this trip. Congratulations, what could go wrong? Um, here's the thing. I slept with her sister on a drunken, blacked out night three years ago while me and her were not together and were on bad terms. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. My heart was broken and I had a lot of resentment. I was 23, drunk, weak. Shut the fuck up, dude. You had a dick. You fucking jerked off to her while you were dating her other sits. Get the fuck out of here. Don't fucking come at me. I got a dick, too. All right? Don't fuck... And her younger sister came on to me. Oh, my God, you victim. Things were different then, and I was a mess. Listen, I'm not saying you weren't fucking heartbroken. You were, you, you were fucking psyched the next day. There you go. You know what? You just got to check off a whole family. <laughs> All you got left to do is bang their mother. Um. That's got to be called something like the Grand Slam. You know, like when Tiger Woods won four in a row and they were saying he won the Grand Slam. You won, you won all four majors. Would be if you bang the mother and all the daughters. That would be the Grand Slam. Uh, the amount of guys laughing right now while the women are pissed. Uh, well, a year or so later, me and my high school sweetie started talking again and started to become close, leading up to where it is now. I had an unbelievable guilt for what I did with their sister the, the closer me and this girl got years later. It is the only thing that I haven't been honest with her about, and I had to tell her, you fucking idiot. No, you didn't. You should have talked to your sister. And they been like, look, what are we going to do here? You know? Is it, is it good? How does it make things better that you told her? That's such a... And, that, and then, like, for the rest of their fucking lives, that's going to be a problem between the two of them. Ah, oh, Jesus. You shouldn't have said shit and just waited till 20 years later when the sister, you know, who never got married gets fucking hammered and you go, yeah, well, I fucked your husband 25 years ago. And at that point, you know, what are you going to do? You'd be like, yeah, it was, dude, it was in the fucking 2000s. What do you want from me? Um, anyways, he goes, uh, well, a year or so later, me and, and the high school sweetie started talking again, blah, 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 blah. I had an unbelievable guilt. Um... So I had to tell. So the last night of our vacation, oh my God, we were laying in bed and I told her everything. I took a slap. She was crying for hours and it was as ugly as you can imagine. Well, you know what, dude? I commend you. You got it off your fucking chest. He goes, I feel terrible and am torn on if it was the right decision to tell her. My friends are giving me mixed answers and I would like an outside perspective from someone who I respect greatly. Uh, well, Jesus, well, I appreciate you respect me. Um, I don't know, do you? If it was really bugging you and you felt like you had to tell her, good, good, you told her. You know? Now you don't have to worry about that fucking thing coming out of nowhere. He goes, it is still fresh and everything is confusing on what is next. We love each other very much, but obviously I fucked up big time. Do you think this relationship stands a chance? I really hope it does, but I'm worried I ruined it. She seems to be getting through it better than I thought after her first reaction. She told me she loves me, but I really hurt her and she needs some space because when I'm, <laughs> she needs some space. I hope you don't have a brother. <laughs> because when I'm with her, 
Okay, she told me she loves me, but I really hurt her, and she needs some space because when I'm with her, she can't be mad at me. I'm not a scumbag, and this is completely out of character for me to do. I just made a terrible mistake. Thanks, and go fuck yourself. I will say, the fact that you actually feel this level of guilt, um, uh, you're a better man than me because I wouldn't have said shit. I just would have just been like, well, I hope this doesn't fucking come out someday while we're having pumpkin pie over Thanksgiving. Uh, And I bet there's a lot of people out there that live with that secret. My thing is not only the cowardly self-preservation that I would try to have, I would also, I'm also thinking like, this is how I, I would have handled that situation. I either wouldn't have said shit or I would just break up with her and just walk away from it because I, I wouldn't say, hey, by the way, I banged your sister and then for the rest of their life, they have to fucking deal with that. Um, when I'm the piece of shit that did it. But I have to commend you that you actually felt that level of guilt and said something, uh, because I I don't know. So it sounds to me that you're going to get past it. So the good thing is that now you don't have to worry about that fucking grand piano fall crashing down on your fucking life someday. So that's the upside. Um... Maybe there's an upside that you told her where she'll have faith in you that like, wow, this guy actually feels guilt about stuff like that. So I can't trust him. We were broken up while it happened. Um, You know, let me see if I can get Nia in here for this one. Hang on a second. All right, the magic of the pause button again. The lovely Nia is here. Hi. Hey, how you doing? I was watching the VMAs because you refused last night. And we were no, because I, I was watching the, the car race. Is that Formula One? Formula One. Was it? Is it called? Yeah, I said it sounded like a swarm of killer bees. <laughs> it's a lot longer than I thought it was. Okay. Like one of the corners? Yeah, I know. What, yeah. <laughs> Little PlayStation fucking Game Boy they have for a steering wheel now? I didn't know they had to go around 44 times. That's a lot of times. Um, well, it's a long track. It's like a four and a quarter mile track. What? Yeah, they're going like 200 miles an hour. You can't fucking have them drive around a parking lot. Oh my God. I know, but yeah, it was just a lot longer than I thought. And then- yeah, the first time you go to a racetrack, you don't, you never, you can't, you can't believe how fucking big it is. Mm-hmm. Like I've, I've gone by Talladega and it just, <laughs> it just keeps going. And you're like, oh yeah, they're driving like 180 miles an hour. Yeah. So it's got to be long. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, and then I fell asleep, so I wasn't able to catch up on all the moments that everyone's talking about. I don't know what anyone's talking about, but oh, the VMAs. Yeah, I have to go and watch. And you see, obviously, stuff. they're not on MTV, but they're on, they're all online. Yes, videos do, are still produced and made because you're always like, they don't even make videos anymore. They do make music videos, but they're all. How do, how do I say it? They don't even make music videos anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but they're now, all online, but they do make them, and they still have big budgets, too. So That, uh, that was going to be my next question. All right. Ex-girlfriend's sister. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. All right. Really quickly, this guy. All right. I'll give you the abridged version. Uh, I've been on and off again for 10 years. Just got back from a two-week vacation with her. Everything was perfect. We had the time of our lives. This is the woman I want to start a family with. Uh, here's the thing. I slept with her sister on a drunken, blacked-out night three years ago while we met. <laughs> well, uh, while we, me and her were not together and we're on bad turns, my heart was broken. I had a lot of resentment. I was 23 drunk week and her younger sister came on to me. I don't know. I tell you, that's a rough one. <laughs> that's, that's, a, a rough that's a real rough one. <laughs> <laughs> you like how he makes himself the victim? Yeah, she came on to me. You, okay. I said earlier, I said, dude, I have a dick too. Don't fucking lie yeah, to me. Exactly. I Stop said, it. I said you rubbed one out to her before you fucking... Did. Yes, the seeds have been planted for a while that you've been wanting to fuck the sister. Don't try to act like, oh, I was so heartbroken. You and the sister are both dirty. Okay, so here's the deal. He goes, he felt ter- terrible about the last night of the vacation. He couldn't deal with the guilt, so he told her. Oh, my God. He goes, I, tell, he goes, I took a slap. She was crying for hours, and it yep. was as ugly as you can imagine. Yeah. Um, all right. She told me she loves me, but I really hurt her and she needs some space because when I'm with with her, she can't be mad at me. I'm not a scumbag and this is completely out of character for me to do. I just made a terrible mistake. So he's basically saying 
Do you think the uh, relationship stands a chance? I really hope it does, but I'm worried I ruined it. She seems to be getting through it better than I thought after her first reaction. What do you think? Yeah, no, it's it's not going to happen. You fucked her sister. It's over. That's it. You think so? Yeah, because, I mean, maybe. Maybe there are some people who are more emotionally evolved than I am, but I couldn't get better. Like, that's her sister. Like, her sister's not going anywhere. And, like, how is it going to be at, like... Thanksgiving and Christmas and like all that kind of stuff. Like you're just going to avoid each other or just kind of like, it's weird. I mean, maybe the three of them can have a threesome. No. And just get it all away. <laughs> yes. That's no. exactly what I was thinking. You can't, Absolutely. you can't have a threesome with your sister. That's disgusting. That's gross. I would never want to see you just my sister. Stand there getting, no. Talking to each other and he's behind Ta- them. Yeah. 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 Talking to each other. Hey, no. remember we went to uh, the water park? Oh, God. oh no, stop. <laughs> Unless the three of them sit down and both this guy and the sister are so repentant and so whatever. But like you, I, you'd never be able to trust them. You'd no. never no. be like, oh, yeah. Can you guys run out and like, you know, get some extra sugar and By more way, groceries? Try not to <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So, and that's the thing. She might be okay with him now, but in the end, she's going to choose her sister. Like that, no matter how her sister betrayed her, that's the sister. So, you are disposable. You're just like the dude. That's her family. So, if you think that you really but have a chance. I feel like chance, they're done too. The, her and the sister? Yes. Her and the sister will probably get past it. Look, I have, I have but to like say, what, long, a what? long, long ways from now, and it will probably always still be there, but because they're family. I mean, family betrays each other all the time, Here's you know? The thing, though. Here's the thing. I think what she did was worse than what he did. The sister? Yeah. Oh, definitely. If we're going to, like, put them on who was the worst person in the situation, the sister, 100%. So here's what I learned. You never do that. If you're with a woman, okay, mm-hmm. okay, you guys break up and blah, blah, blah. If her sister comes on to you, like, <laughs> you are effectively ending that relationship forever. Yeah. Yeah. And, Not only and, what, do you yeah, think he should have told her, her you, and the relationship. Do you think he should have told her? Uh, the thing about it is, is that he told her because he felt guilty. So it was to unburden his own conscience because it wasn't real. Because there's nothing in telling her that would make her feel better. And oh my God, thank you so much for being honest with me. That's the sister. So. I don't know. I, I don't really Is know how nothing, to answer nothing that. nothing commendable that he had such guilt that he had to tell her? Not really, because people are Man, burdened ooh, with guilt all that. the time. And they like, oh, I just had to get it off my chest. And it's like, great, congratulations. It's off your chest. Now I feel shitty. So was that really for me or was that for you? Nia Renee Hill coming here bringing <laughs> the lumber. <laughs> yeah, I... I, I don't, I don't, I'm not with that whole like, well, at least he was honest with you. It's like, for what? For me? No. That was all for him to I never himself. looked at it that way. Wow. Yeah. Not that I don't think apologies are worthwhile or I don't, I, it's not like I don't think that you should apologize for something you did wrong, but I just feel like you really need to question. I was question, really hoping that's what you were saying. Yeah. You really need to <laughs> question your motivations for confessing something of this level. You know what I mean? It's like, what are you really trying to do? A lot of times people are just trying to unburden themselves. Well, that's what I was saying. The best thing now is he got it out there. So he doesn't have to worry about that grand piano coming crashing down into his life someday. Like I'm saying, they are having like fucking Thanksgiving dinner. What I want to know is what is going on between the girl and the sister. Because obviously... That's no sister. That's no real. I don't know. That's what know, I'm more interested in. You know what? Something in. else. Why that's fucked up is because now you know that the parents know. You know. You think she would have told the parents like mom? But if they know, Stephanie fucked my boyfriend. Yeah, and then they got to be like, oh my god, we raised a whore. And I don't think that she's a whore. I'm not sure she's not a whore. I'm saying, but she people got, make, she got people some make issues. mistakes, but she's that's got, really no, that, yeah. that's that's issues. No, no, that's that's beyond. That's a power thing. Yeah, it is <gasps> a total power thing. It is. I wonder if this was a younger sister, and I wonder, like, who knows? But that's what I'm more intrigued about now. It's like, what's going to happen with these sisters? You know, that's like that's some deep shit right there. So. Some- yeah, I don't know. Th- that's like a power thing on her thing saying like, you know, as much as you're into her, you still can't fucking resist me. Mm-hmm. What is it? 
Yeah, maybe so. Because who does that? Who goes after... Nia, let us into the female mind. I, I can't let what you in on, on that. It, That's not a female thing. That's like a dirty ass hoe, bitch, nasty person. I don't know what that's like. I would never go after a relative's like significant other. So where do you draw the line? What do you mean? Coworker. <laughs> so you're not... <laughs> <laughs> Just so the people know, because you really have strong opinions on this, so I want to know. I do. So family, obviously. Yeah, no, hey, you don't do that. It's about your family. Yeah. If, 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 they, if this family, is a person that is clearly in a relationship with somebody else, and you know, got they've all been that. together, I like, want to know. I want to know where you draw the line. Coworker, you okay? You guys occasionally have lunch together. With the sister's coworker? Yeah, and there's something the guy's got like he does like the, the paisley tie with the suspenders, you know that. Oh, always, can't resist yeah, that. Yeah, you guys always go nuts about that. <laughs> no belt. <laughs> no suspender. Belts. Yeah. Yeah, well if you have suspenders you don't need a belt, so but anyway, um yeah. What if he has both? Suspenders and a belt, and then you think like then well, I don't this know guy, what it is that you're trying to do. Well maybe why would you have both? <laughs> wouldn't that wouldn't that like get that thing, that female thing where like you'd feel safe? Like, this guy's really going to have, like, he's going to have an alarm system and a gun. Yeah, I know. And a sword. And, and wear two condoms. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah, no. I mean, if they're not involved, if they're not, like, in a real relationship. Neighbors. Then, yeah, that's neighbor. not would a... You, would you bang a neighbor? Would I bang, like, my sister's would neighbor? You, no, not your sister's neighbor. We're taking family out of it. Oh, I'm okay. saying, where, where is the line where mm-hmm. it's just like, well, whatever, bitch, you know. Isn't that how you guys say? You put the hand up, whatever, bitch. <laughs> but what um, are you talking about? <laughs> I'm saying, because you're saying, like, that's family. You can't fucking do that. I was right. just trying to find a comedic angle here. Now oh, like, I see what you mean. I mean... Neighbor, two streets over. Your neighbor knew them, invited you over, and you went over there. You know what? I have a real-life example of this. The guy, was an, the guy was an architect. Okay, all right. I, I got it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have a real-life example of this. During, okay. during my prom... I went my senior prom. I oh, went with somebody else. Oh, you're dirty. Yep. Wait a minute. I went with somebody who was just a friend, okay? But Biz my Markey. friend, yes, Biz Markey. Yep. <laughs> he was just a friend. <laughs> um, but my friend went to the prom with this guy that she had just met, and they were set up by another friend. Oh. He went to a different school, so they didn't really like know each other. Here come the but justif- that was the day. justifications. The is, they just we- met. <laughs> they were set up by friends, so I'm totally innocent. So we just say really, the dirty thing you we did. really connected during prom, and like, oh. as you know, that was not what happened. As you know, my prom did not end that great. My parents like came and like took me from this house that I was in because I was dumb enough wait to tell them the truth. I called my parents because I was supposed to spend the night at a girlfriend's house, but instead. We were going to be hanging out at this boy's house. His older sister was there. There was a whole bunch of us. But we were hanging out. I was having such a great time that I called my parents and I said, hey, just so you know, I'm staying here. My mom completely flipped out and she and my stepfather came and like extracted me from the home. So exactly. that's how my prom ended. Exactly. So it didn't end on any. It was a very traumatic. But great parents. Ultimately, they did the right thing. Um, but anyway, he, me and this guy ended up connecting and we ended up like dating afterwards. So, you know, um, oh, that's different. I thought you were saying like, you know, like I, we went in the bathroom, went into the the front part of the limo and and put the window up. (laughs) No, 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 no. But it wasn't her boyfriend. They had just met. I think she definitely felt some type of way about it, you know, Um, only because he chose you over her. Exactly. You guys didn't have any sort of like friendship, friendship? No, she and I were <laughs> really good friends. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, no. No, that's not good. Oh, that's a rough one. But it wasn't her oh, boyfriend. There's a, there's a, lot a lot of rough ones saying. here. A lot of rough ones. And we dated for a while. We dated up until, you know, like I went to college basically. And that was, that was the end of that. So it wasn't like this long term, you know, torrid affair. It wasn't like he was my first love or anything. He was just really cute and a football player and... Likes Bob Marley, you know, hey, what can I say? <laughs> oh, I'm sorted, sorted, sorted <laughs> details here. All right. Well, that's the podcast for this week. Um, geez, Nia, you came hard this week. You came hard. You really fucking just put that guy. You just said, you know what, then that's it. It's a fucking rap. And you know what? I think you're right. Mm-hmm. I think you're right. I can say that. Yeah. As I sit here in my PJs. Thank you. Yeah. 
How long have I had these fucking pajamas? I've had these as long as I've known you. These fucking pajama <laughs> bottoms. There's two things that'll never die. Pajamas will never get holes in them. Right. And sweatpants. You cannot kill sweatpants that are made out of that fucking... Um, I think I'm going to go do some break dance. Mm-hmm. What was that? Boogaloo something or other? Whatever the fucking movie is. <laughs> Boogaloo. Yeah. yeah. Whatever that fucking movie. Electric Breakin'. Boogaloo. Break Electric Boogaloo, right? Right. Was, was that that break, was the Breaking one. 2. Electric, Electric Boogaloo. Boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a weird period where all those dance movies are coming out. You know, one of the worst dance movies of all time is Footloose. That is some of the worst dancing ever. It's it, Yeah, it's not great dancing. It's It's pretty peak white dancing, but... It's still a fun movie. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Because I, I don't I just it's how how you can fucking sit through the excruciating dances in that movie and that still movie see is the fun and it's cute and it's like Because it's a town where they It's a they, small they, town they and they ban dancing. dancing. That's right, because dancing and folks. Was the that devil. an off Broadway play that they turned into a fucking They made it into a Broadway show, of course. Because they always That's do. where it should have stayed. Yeah, I don't know. You should have to decide to go. Kevin Bacon was hot in it. Remember that part where he goes and he does that solo dance out of frustration in the barn and he's like flipping around on the beams and the ceiling along the barn and he's, you know, no? You was that the this? Billy Squire video? Billy, who's Billy Squire? <laughs> Billy Squire, the poor bastard. The guy was a fucking oh, rock star. Oh, this guy that you were like obsessed with watching all of his videos when we were on vacation? Yeah, because <laughs> when I was watching him live in like Detroit, I was like, this guy was a fucking rock star. Yeah, you got to see the video. It's so bad. I, no, I remember you showed me the video. Did I show you when he was crawling on his fucking? Mm-hmm. I, I feel bad to, piling on, but like. I yeah, know boy. the guy already feels like it ended his career. What are you doing? I know, and I said I wouldn't do it. I said I wouldn't do it, and here I am. <laughs> no, I don't know what is. It's the. Uh, you need to apologize to Billy Squire and get that off your chest. Off my sh- while chest. He's, while he still feels shitty about it. Oh, by the way, his drummer, I guess, is pronounced Schoonard, Bobby Schoonard. I'm reading through that book, and I'm reading that WBCN book, which is fucking great. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, that's it. That's the podcast for this week. Thank you for stopping by, Nia. Thank you for Always me. with your wonderful advice, your Thank stories, you. your general <laughs> adorability. Um, the dog needs to go for a walk. Yep. Take her around. Hey, Cleo, you want to go outside? Look at that look. She has been wanting to go all morning, poor thing. Cleo, let me see. Can I get her to howl on the, on the podcast? Cleo. Wait, have her sit down. Cleo, sit. 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 Sit down. Come on. Sit. Cleo. You want to go outside? Cleo. Come on, man. Fucking, this is just like the, <laughs> she's like the frog. Cleo. Do you? No. Cleo, you want to go outside? Because she knows you're trying to get her to do it. Wait, hold on. Cleo, you want to go outside? There it is. (laughs) All right. All right, I'll see you guys. Check in on you on Thursday. I think it's time to do some, uh, let's do some questions here for the week. All right, Mother Teresa. Oh, Jesus, Mother Teresa. She's up there rubbing Jesus' head at this point. Um, hey there, Billy Angel tits. <laughs> uh, you creative cunts. Um, way back when you talked about Mother Teresa, I don't even remember this, and how overrated she was, you didn't like her quotes that the U.S. was morally bankrupt and that, pov- then that the poverty of spirit in the U.S. was the worst poverty she's seen, including the hunger poverty in India. Yeah, I don't like people. I don't like people who don't live here talking shit about my country. If you want to shit on the U.S. and you live here, I don't have a fucking problem with that. I do have a problem with the fact that the Cardinals almost just scored there. Um, yeah, yeah, then shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? Why would you talk shit about another country? I mean, I do it, but that's just because I want to sell tickets there. You know, you talk a little bit of trash. I'm selling the fight. That's all. Wow, what a battle between Butler and Fitzgerald, huh? He's hanging in there. He's hanging in there. Oh, we should have caught that. All right. Sorry. I'm, I'm going to stop watching the game. No, I'm not. But I'm going to stop talking about it. How about that? All right. All right. So I didn't like her talking shit about the country. Well, now she's going to be a saint. There are plenty of documentaries of things she did that had negative effects. Any thoughts on the old lady? Come back to Seattle. Well, here's the deal. 
when somebody gets made a saint, it's uh, it does, it's not because they did nice things. First and foremost, you had to make the Catholic Church money, right? Is that who she works for? And what she did by going around with all these poor people was she was like out in the field. You know what I mean? She's like that cop that never wanted to have a desk job, wanted to be out on the beat, be there with the people. But the whole time, she's selling that religion. And it made them millions and millions of dollars. It took millions and millions and millions of dollars out of these poor people's hands, you know, to basically invest in a fucking theory that has no, you know, no proof to it whatsoever. Basically invest all this money in, um, ah, you son of a bitch. Oh, that's Fitzgerald. He's 11. I thought he was 15. I'm a fucking dope. Nice catch. God damn it. He's a great player. Ah, shit. What the fuck's the score now? I would really... I like the Cardinals, man, but I really love the Patriots to win just because the Colts lost. Look at the guy's almost looking upside down. Bounces it on his finger. Does he have control? Does he make a football move? Yes, he fucking caught it. If they take this thing away, I swear to God, I don't even... I don't, what, what does the guy have to do? Did he secure it up against there? Um, yeah, so I think she's a saint. You know, she... You know, she won Look, even if she fucked over the poor, she still would be down there and some of basically who's kidding who? Some of the stinkiest, smelliest parts of fucking humanity. Because, you know, when you have that level of poverty, you know, and they don't have running water and stuff, people are just shitting everywhere. You know, that alone, the fact that you, if you have access to first world plumbing, if you go into the third world to try to help those people out, yeah, I think you are a saint. I would think so. Granted, she sold them, you know, the whole fucking bill of goods there with the mass murdering, you know, child raping entity. But other than that, I mean, so, you know, when those people say you're a saint, does that really mean something? Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I have no fucking idea what she did. I know she was like Alicia Keys and she didn't wear makeup. I do know that. I don't think she could play the piano. Um, yeah, I have, I have no idea. Well, now she's going to be a saint. Look, she's dead. You know, I, I made fun of her when she was alive. Now she's dead. I, I think I can leave her alone. All right, lobster anesthesia. Old Billy Red Lobster. Red, you know, I've never eaten at a Red Lobster. I just never had the courage to fucking eat, like, fast food, seafood. It just, it always seems like if anything's going to give you food poisoning, it's going to be, it's going to be, you know, the bottom feeders of the ocean, right? They're already eating the fecal matter there, right? So, uh... The only time I've ever been to a Red Lobster, I actually performed there. Remember a long time ago, I did a stand-up show in a Red Lobster with this fucking hilarious comedian, Julie Barr, and a couple of other people. And it was just one of those shows early in my career where you're going in there and everybody on the show, before we go up, we all know we're going to take a fat one. It's going to be difficult. And uh, you're just laughing. You just stand there going, this is fucking impossible. This family's here. Are we allowed to curse? What's going to happen? People got bibs on. They're trying to they're trying to navigate this fucking little red dinosaur on their plate. How the hell are they going to listen to me? I, I suck when they're paying attention, you know? So anyways, let's get back to Red Lobster here. There's actually, there actually is a method that is supposed, and he said, I'm no lobster neurobiologist, to numb lobsters before you boil them. You stick the lobster in the freezer for a few minutes, before slicing it through the brain. The freezer is supposed to be the most humane way because at least when people start to freeze to death, they eventually feel a warmth go over them and they start to become unconscious. Supposedly, this helps the flavor because the anesthesia decreases the stress hormones release compared to the dude being boiled while conscious or having its brain chopped in half like the obituary song. Hope this helps and have a blessed day. Fuck, oh. Um, If you stick a lobster in a freezer for a few minutes, it's just going to freeze. It's just going to be really cold and be miserable. And then you're going to stick it in the fucking hot water. I just, I, you know something? I'm never eating lobster again. Okay? They do enough bad shit to chicken and cows and stuff. 
I don't need to add this. It's just so fucked up. I was watching this thing on this French restaurant, and this guy takes these live lobsters and puts them over an open flame. It's just like, yeah, I always go back to that time I watched that chimpanzee catch that smaller monkey, and he stood on the thing, and he just started just digging into its back, pulling its back meat out as this thing was screaming. It's just like killed with for fucking animals, man. There's no fucking reason to do that, man. I still think what I'm saying is better. You just take a little lobster bat, you bash it over the head, immediately unconscious. Like if somebody hit you in the head as hard as they could with the bat, you're not going to feel any pain. You're not even going to fucking remember it. You can't do that to those things? I don't know. It just seems wrong. All right, so it's 2120, and we just took a fucking sack. Nice play. God damn it. Bull Rush Jones right up the fucking middle. Give us the old right there, Fred. But you know what? Look at fucking Jimmy Garofalo here. Garoppolo, he's doing great. We're hanging in there. Cardinals are no slouches, right? Did they almost go to the Super Bowl last year? Wow, we even held on that play. Gave a little spin move. All right, grumpy Billy Goat, Billy Goat terrorizes town. All right, evidently I'm supposed to watch this. All right, I'll watch it. Here we go. With my hotel internet. Oh, this is great. I love goats. There was just two people on a scooter... This fucking thing just knocks him over. Oh, watch it, lady. You got to feel the backside pressure. Backside pressure. Get rid of the ball. Get rid of the ball. Are you looking for the Tom Brady fucking treatment? Yeah, that's it. No flag there. Come on, you, UFC. You can't kick when they're down. <laughs> Look at this guy coming in. There you go. Front kick, front kick. Oh, he's going like what's his face there. Come on, man. Who do I root for here? This is, this is, this. you know what, come on, I want the guy in the striped shirt, there you go, kick that motherfucker, you hit your lady. This thing's a pimp. Should have kicked it right in its fucking udder. Dude, I would grab that thing by its fucking head. Is that a cop? That's hilarious, this is definitely another country, that was a cop here that fucking shoot it. He loves that dude in the striped shirt. This guy's going to slip and fall and crack his head. Dude, he runs like a girl. Come on, man. That was that was interesting. I like that. I like, yeah, I love goats, man. The thing is, is you can't you can't show any fear, man. I like how that guy was trying. He was trying to give him the, the, the front kicks, like the Anderson Silva, right? Um, all right, I don't know why. I don't know why, why the fuck would I watch that. You guys can't see it, right? Well, you know what? Grumpy Billy, Billy Goat terrorizes town. That's what you want to look at if you want to see the commentary there. And where the fuck was I? All right. I love goats, man. I've ever tell you that shit. Like, that's the, that's the pet I should have had. They just smell really bad, though. But, like, you know, they are, like I was, like, wrestling with my dog and shit. But it makes the dog aggressive. But goats are already like that, and they live outside. So they're not going to be anywhere near your company. I should get, you know, that's the next thing I'm going to I'm going to get a goat, right? I just have it in a pen. Get it a friend. Right? They can fucking hang out. And then every morning I'll come out there and I'll be like, what's up? You know, reach over the fence, grab it by its beard, get a little fucking yank, you know? Get the thing going. Wrestle around with it for a little bit. All right, dad won't quit smoking. Oh, Jesus. Your dad will not quit smoking. What the hell's wrong with him? He's going he's gonna to kill himself. All right. Hey, Billy Rednuts. My dad's been smoking since he was 14 years old. And at 62 years old, he recently had his second heart attack. Jesus Christ. The doctor has told him flat out, if you want to live, you have to, talk, you have to stop smoking. Um, yeah, I would think so. Even after hearing this, he lit up a cigar five minutes after getting out of the hospital. I got into a huge argument with him about it, and I told him if he didn't give a shit about his health, then I shouldn't care either. We didn't talk for months. Wow, dude, this is fucking heavy here. Uh, we've tried to we've tried reasoning with him. We've tried yelling at him. We've tried guilting him with the "Don't you want to walk me down the aisle?" routine. None of it works. To clarify, he smokes cigars every single day, all throughout the day. So it's more than an occasional puff. 
his diminishing health is visible in his everyday interactions with us. It's harder for him to breathe. He can't. Is he inhaling? He can't walk as fast as or as far as he used to. He can barely play with his grandkids, and his face has aged immensely since the last heart attack. Every time I get a call from a family member, I get anxious that it's going to be the call, telling me my dad has had his last heart attack. It's, I'm constantly on pins and needles, and it's really starting to affect me. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, as someone who has struggled with certain vices yourself, what finally made you feel like you wanted to limit your intake? Uh, is there a way I could get through to my father and get him to quit for good, or should I just accept the fact that we all go someday and let him enjoy himself for the limited amount of time he has left? Thanks, and go fuck yourself. All right, wow. Um, all right, what makes me want to limit my intake is because I don't want to end up being like that. Um, but I, I also, I don't know, I don't like having shit have control over me. You know what I mean? And uh, I also found that, like, when you're just constantly smoking a cigar, you know, if you smoke too much, like, they, they're not special anymore. Like, it's great when, you know, I like now just planning a cigar night, like, a couple weeks away. Like, uh, the f absolutely fucking hilarious Burt Kreischer is um, one of the great guys you could ever hang out with. Forget about smoke a cigar with. He's trying to organize a cigar night. And um, I already have it circled on my calendar. I'm excited. I'm thinking about what cigar I'm going to have. But, like, when I just, you know, have a whole box of them and every night I'm just going out there smoking, it's just you start smelling like a cigar. It's bad. It's like, you know, if I'm drinking every night, I don't know. It's just one of those things where I, I don't like the way I feel. I don't like the way I feel when I wake up in the morning. And I know it's bad. I know it's aging me. I, I just know. I know it's bad for me. But... With your dad, that he's been doing this for so fucking long, um, I would definitely, I would be livid at my dad if he was doing that. And I would be unbelievably frustrated and I would continue, obviously, to try to get him to stop because you love your dad, you know? However, there does come a point where it's just like if, the person has resigned themselves to this is what they want to do. I mean, if he just had his fucking second heart attack and the doctor's going, listen, you're going to die if you don't stop smoking. And he walks out and literally just lights up a cigar. Um, obviously, he's a complete addict, and but I don't know. He's not fighting it on any level. So um, I don't know. Depending on how exhausted you are I know myself after a while I would just say you know what fuck it um, and it would suck because when my dad if my dad died like that I would there would be a definite level of resentment and anger that I would have at him but I, I just think maybe the peace you can find is that he's addicted he's an addict and this isn't your father making this decision it's it's the chemicals and all of that shit that makes you makes you do this that's really unfortunate and there's really nothing funny in there um jesus i was gonna smoke a cigar tonight too <laughs> um i guess that fucking that's out the goddamn window jesus christ anyways let's try to shake that off all right uh advice strip club with wife oh jesus a hey, Bildo. Uh, that's a good one. I've heard that one before, but uh, it's always nice to bring that one back. Me and my wife and six of our friends are planning a trip to Vegas early next year. Bars, strip clubs, the whole shebang. I'm 27 and my wife is 26. We've been married for four years. I was wondering if you and Nia or past girlfriends have gone to strip clubs together. And if so, what's the etiquette? Neither me and my wife have been to a strip club before. Obviously, I wouldn't mind taking in the sights, but also don't want to be a piece of shit. Oh, God, this has fucking train wreck written all over. I know this isn't exactly something on my wife's bucket list, but I don't think she'll hate it either. She's told me in the past she appreciates the female body. 
Not necessarily grinding on mine, though. Um, I think she'd probably enjoy it more if I wasn't there. LOL. Would love to know what you and Nia would have to say on the subject. Thanks. Well, Nia's not here. This is what I would say. Okay? Um, you need to stay as sober as humanly fucking possible, and you need to not indulge at all. I, what your indulgement should be is your wife enjoying the experience. That's what you do. All right? And uh, I would not get a fucking lap dance in front of my wife. I would not do that. Not that my wife, Neil wouldn't give a shit, but my wife is like ridiculously fucking cool. My wife is honestly one of the coolest females. She, she transcends her sex. The only reason why I say she's a cool female is because so many of them are fucking nightmares and they won't let you do anything. They won't let you have any fun or whatever. Like she just, you know, she you guys here on the podcast. She's that's not an act. She's that fucking cool and funny. But most people are not in that situation. So it's there's a few red flags in there. You're going with other couples like let the other couples get into the fights because somebody's going to go too fucking far. Somebody's going to get too drunk. Somebody's going to fuck up and somebody's going to have that fucking thing brought up for the next 10 years in their fucking marriage because God knows that's what the fuck they do. So all your mission that night is is to not be that guy. Strip clubs are not going anywhere. Okay, you can always go to one another night when she's not fucking there or if she actually ends up having a good time the second time and just literally tell her, just say, listen, I wasn't going to get drunk and I wasn't going to do anything to embarrass you. Then she'll fucking respect you. So I would just say, go real easy on the booze there and, uh, you know, get your wife a fucking lap dance. That's what you do. And then just say, you know, and just say you're good. You're good. You know, and when your fucking guy friends are all trying to pressure you into doing something. Just tell them to go, you know, just, yeah, I'm cool. I'm cool. Don't worry. I'm having a good time. Okay? And let them do all the dumb shit. Let them wake up the next day when you guys go to breakfast and be the ones that have to say, yeah, sorry, I got a little crazy last night. Or be the ones that are clearly just had a huge fight and are not talking during breakfast. You don't need that shit. All right? You don't need that shit. It's a very... um all of that type of shit. There's like, when you're sitting there going, what are the rules? The rules are the rules that you and your wife come up with. And um, the fact that your wife has never been to one is just all of the fucking makings of a shit show. So like I said, I, I'm not going to read I'm going to say this again because you're a young guy. Do not be the drunk guy. And I'm telling you, just make sure she has a good time. Ask her if she's all right. Ask her if this is cool, if she wants to get out of there. Just totally be attentive to her, and there's no way it can be a fucking problem. And then you can get on with your goddamn life, and then fucking whatever. Some other time, you go to a titty bar, maybe you bring her along. You know, she might fucking end up wanting to see you get a fucking lap dance. You're like, you're serious? Yeah. And then she'll be like, all right, which one do you want? You know, and then that's another thing that could be a fight. You know what I mean? You fucking pick some, you know, I don't, I don't, that's just one of those, it's just, it's just one of those things. I remember one time, um, there's this famous, um, strip club in Los Angeles called Jumbo's Clown Room. Okay. And it is just as creepy and disgusting as it sounds. I don't think it's like that anymore. It, it's, it's way better now. But back in the day, it was literally like, you know, if I was a serial killer, like that would be my Starbucks. You know what I mean? Sit there with my laptop <laughs> in a chat room with other serial killers. I mean, it was a fucking disgusting place. So I had been there uh, maybe three times over the course of 20 years going out to uh, L.A. And it was always just a shady, shifty fucking place. So one time um, I was out with Nia and she brought up that she wanted to go to this fucking place. And I was just like, are you serious? You want to go to that place? I don't want to go to that place. I go to that place. It's, it's not a cool place. Right up. So she goes, come on, let's just go. So I, all right, fuck it, let's go. It was her fucking idea. So we ended up going there. By the way, it's 2321 with 338 to go. I already know you guys know who won this fucking game. Flag on the fucking Cardinals. I love it. Take it back. Take it back. By the way, I forget the Cardinals coach, man, but I saw a great 
uh, they did a whole special on the guy. Seems like the fucking coolest dude ever. Um, but anyways, um, so we ended up going there. And I sat over in the corner. I didn't get a lap dance or anything like that. But I think I've told this story before. I literally saw a stripper quit on stage that night. It was fucking amazing. Um, we walked in, and there was, like, one guy sitting up near the stage. And there was, like, three other people up at the bar with their backs to the stage. So this woman comes out looking a little rough, you know. And uh, she starts doing a thing. She dances to one song. The song ends. Nobody claps. Okay? The guy who was sitting up near the stage was not there anymore. So now it, it kind of becomes like a philosophical, philosophical question. Like basically, if I'm in a strip club dancing, but nobody's watching me, Am I technically still in show business, right? So basically what happened was, you know, no one was fucking paying attention. So she ends the first song, you know, you know, because I'm wanted, dead or alive. She slowly slides down the pole. And then the next song starts and she's just laying there and she's not dancing. She's not doing anything. And I'm going like, oh, my God, this is like watching a boxer, like not answer the bell, right? And just quitting on the stool. And she just rolled over. And somehow she had her cell phone. And she just started checking, like, her fucking emails. And at that point, like, this... One of the barback ladies walked by, saw it, and laughed. And said, that's awesome. And she just laid there for the rest of the song. And didn't dance. And gathered her shit. Didn't take up any more of her clothes. And that's like she quit being a stripper. She just quit dancing for the night. And, uh... I thought it was fucking awesome because fucking Larry Fitzgerald. What a catch. God damn it. That guy's good. They're marching down the field. Looks doesn't look like we're in a prevent though. So that's good. They're on the fuck. Uh, here it comes. They're going to be in two more catches. They're going to be in fucking field goal position. Ripping our heart out there, Carson. Um, so anyways, she ends up. Uh, yeah, I just as a performer, I respected it. You know what I mean? It's like if you're a comedian, I'm doing my act and no one's listening, no one's paying attention. I'm just going to stop and I'm going to shit on the crowd. That's it. I'm not going to waste my time doing my material. So why should she take her bottoms off and show everybody the fucking world if they're not even going to look at it? Right? Um, so there you go. There's my fucking stripper story. But me and Nia never had a problem. I think I want to say I've gone to a couple. Have I been to a couple? Maybe one other with her. Um, I got to tell you, it's not fun. It's not fun to, to go to a titty bar with your wife or even with other women. It's just like everything. I used to do a bit in my act about that. Like when women started going to titty bars, they would always go like, you know, at some point they always say, this isn't as, this isn't as bad as I thought it was. I think this isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. And the joke of my act was, yeah, because you're here. Leave and it'll get evil again. Um, that's one of the worst things ever that happened, that women started going to titty bars. You know what I mean? It's like, can't you just go to a fucking male one? Can't you go to the fucking Chippendales one and have some fucking goddamn dick swinging in your face? If you're a lesbian, then yeah, come on in. Have a good time, right? It's just like, they just constantly, they just constantly have to be around us. It's fucking unbelievable. They think we're stupid. They think we do dumb shit, but they just can't get enough of doing every dumb fucking thing that we do. They're down to the 28th fucking yard line. The annual the announcers are going to be right. Oh, now the question is, are they leaving too much time on the clock, assuming that they hit this field goal? I actually like that this is going to happen, because if they kick this field goal, right, what, are they going to be up by one or something? Is that what it's going to be? And then we get to watch Jimmy go down and do his thing. He's going to get some experience. i got to tell you, I've been impressed with him. He's playing all right. You know, that kid for fucking Dallas played all right, and the dude there on Tampa Bay, I guess, like, Jason Law had said a long time ago, he's like, that guy, even though we saw them get destroyed in the fucking Rose Bowl, he was still talking about him. Jameson, right? Don Jameson? No, that's the, that's the fucking comedian there from fucking uh, that, that metal show. Whatever. He was saying that if, if, um, if uh, 
you know, he had a couple of, I forget what Law had said. He said, give me a couple good wideouts and that fucking quarterback and you could do something in the NFL. And it's looking like he's right. He had four fucking touchdown passes today. It's incredible. Um, of course, yet another thing that I missed here. So anyways, all right, that's the podcast here.